Um, yes, sir. But it turns out that under our assumption of I'm just going out for one thing and coming back, you would never use that, I mean, in theory land. So this is a, a nice three-dimensional view. I'd, all credit to my colleague, um, Ben Strout, from the architecture uh, world. Uh, I send him two-dimensional PDFs. He sends these back to me in a few minutes. So I, he's got magic software that does that. So th there are basically three kinds of picks here. Picks along the bottom, where I would just travel along the bottom and up and go get something in the traditional way. Then I have travel up the cross aisle and to get something above the cross aisle and back. Or in some cases, I may go along this way and then hook down to get something and come back that way. And that can be the shortest travel. Um, Anyway, so those are sort of three travel paths that you might think about doing here. If you never did this, it turns out the benefits are almost identical as if you uh, did do the, the sort of hook pattern travel for you uh, football fans. So this is a, a plot of the potential reduction in expected travel distance. This is not labor cost because your workers do more than drive. Okay, they're picking and doing paperwork and going to the bathroom and all that kind of stuff. This is purely travel distance. And this is the expected benefit in percentage over a warehouse that has no cross aisle at all. Okay? And this is the number of aisles in the warehouse. So the top one that I just showed you was 21 aisles. And these H's are the height of the warehouse space in numbers of pallets. So 50 pallets deep, 75 pallets deep, and 100 pallets deep. And these are the expected reduction in travel distance. Essentially, you're doing rectilinear distance over and up, east, west, north, south, in a traditional design. Here, I'm getting that sort of Euclidean advantage, we would say, from the old geometry world, right? And so this is the expected benefit for these designs. That's correct. Yeah, in fact, if you're just doing unit load operations, um, you would never do this if you're doing single command unit load because you get no travel advantage to having this middle aisle. It's just over and up, right? And essentially what you've done is you've taken half your stuff and moved it further away from the bottom. So you would never do this. So we're comparing against the base case of no cross aisle at all. Now, obviously, if you've got dual commands, you do want this and so on. And, you know, we've, that's part of our other analysis for that I'm not really focused on tonight. This is the second design that we got, uh, came up with in some other modeling. This is called the fishbone, hopefully for obvious reasons. Now, this is a theoretical sort of output of the model. Obviously, in practice, you would not have this bottom sort of which is blocking all the access, essentially. But again, remember, I'm just out going to one point and coming back. And so I would begin travel right in here, go out along the cross aisle and over or out and up, whatever it happens to be, and back down. So this, um, I wrestled with this mentally before we had the computational tools to understand whether the expected benefit here was greater or less than the other design. Um, I'll let you chew on that just for a moment, whether this is better than the flying V or worse. Um, so this is the second design. And here's the answer. It turns out to be quite a bit better, almost twice as good. Um, so the expected benefit, again, here is about 20% for many cases. But I, you know, depending on, again, the number of aisles equivalent for the warehouse, now the scale here is slightly different. So for the 21 aisles, that's somewhere in here. Depending on, again, the, the height of the warehouse space, you're anywhere from sort of 16% to 20, 20.5%, 20 something like that. Again, that's not labor costs, just reduction in travel distance. So quite a bit better here. And one of the reasons is um, the most expensive picks in a traditional warehouse are over and then all the way up into these corners. And they're just terrible for a traditional design. Here. I'm almost straight line right to it. And so it really cuts, obviously, right through the um, uh, diagonals of the warehouse and you can get to those picks along that, that angle. Yes, sir? It's about the same. 
yeah, maybe slightly larger. By the way, your mileage will vary there depending on the angle because the more the angle um, or the steeper the angle, the more the width kind of doesn't quite work. And so it won't be, anyway, you'd have to spread them out more than 12 feet to get a, the equivalent of a 12 foot aisle and all that. So, you know, 5%, I don't know, something like that. But again, it's about the same. Okay, yeah, that's a great question. In fact, in this warehouse, they only have to do 45 degree turns. And so, as I'll say here toward the end, one of the, uh, uh, I'll just say it now since someone's already brought it up. We interviewed the workers at the, um, the Generac facility and one of them said, um, I really love this layout because I can take turns at full throttle. <laughs> Yeah, actually, um, I have a comment on that that I'm going to save till later, too. <laughs> yeah, so there are some worker issues. Um, there's some safety questions. Uh, there's some visibility questions. And I want to defer all those sort of implementation type things to the photographs at the end. I'm asking mostly if you know, I mean, is it, is it clear what we're trying to show here and how this sort of works at a level of intuition? By the way, we have a host of other designs that I'm not showing tonight. Um, and we have. This is the best that we have published. I have a design that's slightly better than this one now um, that has been uh, developed by one of my PhD students. Um, and that was not ready for prime time yet. Yes. Okay, sure, I'll be happy to. Any more questions on the fish bone here? One of the things that sort of inspired us in all of this is just breaking the rules. And by rules, I mean just things that have sort of formed our thinking over decades and decades of building warehouses. Why do we do it like that? Why do we do it like that? What if we didn't assume that? What could come out? And so we've just been free thinking and trying not to get too constrained with reality um, for a while. And we're continuing in this vein. So, you know, some of the stuff that we're suggesting is probably kooky and not implementable, but. Uh, that's one of the luxuries of my job. So we just sort of get out there and see, see what happens. So here's the benefit. All right, so this is a plot. Now this is a width to height ratio. So a, a warehouse that has a square half warehouse, which is most of what I was just showing you, is a two to one ratio, two to one ratio. That's a square half warehouse. That's sort of what should fit with your intuition as being um, optimal in a sense, and in, in the sense we're talking about it, it is. So that's the two to one ratio right here. Now these are the expected benefit for a flying V, these dots. This is the fish bone, and then we've computed a theoretical bound uh, in this way. If I could fly, like the crow, directly to every point in the warehouse, and I didn't have to obey any aisles, what level of benefit would I have over traditional rectilinear travel? That's this curve here at the top. And so you see the fishbone is very close to that, actually. It's realizing almost all of the potential gain. Now, we do have one that's about another percent and a half above that. Again, not, not quite ready for prime time. But I think we've pretty much exhausted this problem as far as, you know, how close you can get. <laughs>